Good morning, Edgewater. Are you guys ready to worship this morning? Because I'm excited to be here and I want you guys excited to be here too. So why don't you guys stand and join us in worship this morning?
want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real, death is a lie. I want to hear voices, angels above, singing as one. Hallelujah. Oh.
God, God can do. And he holds our every moment, every moment. He calms our raging seas. Just let's sing to him now. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging seas. You walk with me through fire and heal my disease. I trust in you. I trust in you. I believe.
pray together. God, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to be here together in worship. To uh, spend time focusing on you, on who you are. To be able to kind of just hit the pause button on life. Because it just seems like uh, from day to day it's in fast forward mode and, and we're uh, going from uh, event to event and, and job to getting things done and so many things just seem to to swirl around and keep us so busy and a lot of times when we get busy we, we take our focus off of you and so god i pray that you use this time this morning to help us to slow down to uh, set aside the things that uh, keep us so so busy maybe to be able to lay down some of the concerns that we have, the things that are on our hearts, the things that maybe we've been worrying about. And then we have an opportunity now to uh, place them in your hands. So we get a chance to uh, spend time kind of being in your presence. So God, as we've, we've gathered here today, we, uh, we lift our hearts up to you. You know what's going on in our lives. You know the ins and outs of it uh, better than, than, than we ourselves know. So I pray that you will meet us uh, where, where we are. We've all come from different places, different things going on in our lives this week. And you know where to meet us. You know what we need. You know where we need a, a touch from you. You know the, the concerns of our hearts, the joys of our hearts, the places where we need you to be our healer, to, uh, to free us from the, the bonds of places where we are dealing with addictions, to be able to Bring about your healing in these places where we have infirmities. You can meet us at the point of our need. And God, for that we are so grateful. So we just want to take a moment now to, uh, to lift our hearts up to you in a moment of silence. God, thank you so much for, for hearing our prayers. That we have the opportunity to uh, to have conversation with you. That, uh, that we can draw near to to you, and, and that you draw near to us. That you, the the creator of the universe, the one who created us and loves us and has a plan for our lives. That, uh, that you want to be intimately involved with us. God, if there are those here today who, who haven't come to understand that or experience that, I pray that you will. Uh, move in their hearts today. God, make them fully aware of your, your presence and your love for them. So God, as we join together to, uh, to lift up your name in worship and in praise, we now lift up our hearts and voices together as together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. 
So good to see all of you gathered here this morning. My name is Dan Proud. I'm the pastor here at Edgewater. So glad that you are here with us in worship. If you're here with us for the first time, we are so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to come and be here with us in worship. And uh, if, if you are here for the first, second, or third time, please take a moment, fill out one of the uh, uh, yellow cards. You'll find them there in the chairs in front of you. Uh, in a few moments, the ushers will be coming through with the baskets, and you can drop those in there. Um, we also, there's a blue card as well that if, uh, if you have a caring need or a prayer need, you can write that on the card, and uh, that'll go in the basket as well. Um, take some time to look through the bulletin, if you will. Uh, lots of stuff going on. We have a, a busy week this week, a, a lot of stuff going on, uh, and... Part of it uh, happens with our Ash Wednesday service. It's going to be this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Ash Wednesday is kind of the, the beginning of the season of Lent, this 40-day season of preparation as we head into Easter. It's a time of, of reflection and, and looking at our lives and maybe seeing where God might want to, 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 to work and move in us and, and some areas maybe where we need to make a little bit of a, a course correction to head in the way that he wants us to go. Uh, but it's a, it's a really neat, special, meaningful service, so I encourage you to, uh, to be here for that this coming Wednesday evening. Um, look through the rest of the bulletin, if you will. Lots of stuff going on. One thing that's not in the bulletin that I wanted to make you aware of, um, one of the, the neat things about being a United Methodist Church is that we're not here on our own. Uh, we, we are part of what's called a connection. We are connected to other churches. So, so we're Edgewater, but we're part of the Southwest District, which has about 75 churches in it. And, and so we are, we're presided over by a district superintendent. And then we have nine districts in the Florida Conference. And, uh, and the Florida Conference then is pr presided over by uh, a, a bishop. And we have recently been appointed a, a new bishop, uh, Bishop Ken Carter. And uh, the neat thing is, is that this weekend he is here in the Southwest District. Uh, he's down in uh, Faith Fort Myers preaching this morning. But he has invited all of the folks in, in, our, in the district to come and get a chance to hear him speak this afternoon. If you'd like to go and, and be there, it's at Faith Fort Myers. It's at 3 o'clock this afternoon. So I just wanted to uh, extend that invitation from the bishop to you, uh, that if you'd like to go and be there, I encourage you to do that. Get a chance to hear from our new bishop. Um, we'll take some time, like I said, look through the rest of the bulletin. Lots of stuff going on. Put some things on your calendar. Lots of ways to get connected and involved. Uh, but I'm going to ask the ushers now, uh, as, as they come forward to receive the offering, uh, this is the time that we, you want to put those blue and yellow cards in. This is also the time that we bring our tithes and offerings to God. Uh, giving back to him a portion of what he's given to us in the first place, recognizing that all we have, all that we are, comes from God, and, uh, and we're giving back a portion of that to him uh, to be able to do his work and ministry here in this uh, church, in this community, and around the world. So I'm going to ask the ushers, please come forward to receive the offering. our series uh, this week called Mission Possible. Uh, we've been looking at our mission that we've been called to as followers of Jesus Christ, uh, and, but also specifically the mission that God has given to us uh, as the community of Edgewater United Methodist Church. As he's gathered us together here, what is his purpose and plan for us in this place? And so we've been looking at that over the last few weeks. And so uh, as we uh, get ready to see what God's word has in store for us this morning, let's take a moment. Let's pray together, please. <coughs> God, thank you for this time together this morning. I pray that you will give me the words to say that you want me to say, that you will help us to hear what you want us to hear, that you will give us the courage and the strength to act on it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we have, have talked over these last couple of weeks about mission, about the fact that mission is something that is, that is active. It's something that we are to be engaged in. It's not something that's just going to happen if we just kind of sit around and, and don't do anything, but it's something that we're called to participate in. Uh, Jesus laid out kind of the mission for us. Uh, if you remember, we've talked about it, how someone came and asked Jesus, well, what's the most important commandment? And the two things that he basically said, love God, love others. And how we're called to do that in our lives. And, and that if we devoted ourselves to those two things, uh, amazing things would happen in this world. But we have also talked about the fact that we have a call, we have a mission to fulfill here at Edgewater. 
And so let's just refresh our memories on this. We, we've read it every week. You see it all the time around here. But let's go ahead and read this together this morning. Ready? Here we go. Helping people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ. One more time. Helping people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been breaking this down into thirds, looking at it. Two weeks ago, we talked about the fact that we need to help people meet Jesus Christ. We talked about the idea that it needs to happen beyond these four walls. At first, we need to invite and, and extend an invitation to folks to, to bring them in. And I've heard some neat stories of, uh, recently of, of how some of you have been engaging in that and inviting people to come. Uh, but then also, once people get here, that we need to, to welcome them. We, we need to, to create a welcoming environment, but also then that we need to, to uh, in, incorporate them into the, the ministry, the life and ministry of the church. Last week, we talked about the importance, the, the second third of our mission, about how it's important for us to get to know Jesus. And we talked about so many of the different opportunities that we have, different small groups and Bible studies and Sunday school classes and different ways to get connected to, to, to begin to know Jesus on our own a little bit more. And so this week, we're looking at the, the final third of our mission statement in, in, in serving you. It, it, it's a big component of what it is that we're supposed to do, especially as United Methodists. Uh, we, we've mentioned John Wesley over the past couple of weeks. John Wesley is, John Wesley is the guy who founded Methodism, and uh, he, he had what he called his three simple rules. Kind of, kind of echoes what Jesus said. He, Jesus said it in two because he's really cool. But John Wesley said it in three, so it's pretty close. But he said these three things are important for us to do. He said we need to do no harm, we need to do good, and you need to stay in love with God. And, and so as you look at those three things, they're basically two, com two components, two directions. Uh, there, there's a vertical component about the staying in love with God. But there's also that horizontal component of our relationship with one another as well. It kind of echoes like what Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because you see, that, that one component is, is not enough. You can't just love God and, and not care about other people, because then, then it means that your love for God isn't something that's real. You, you need to also have that other component of loving other people. You have to get connected and, and invested in the lives of others. We have the opportunity to be God's hands and feet in the lives of those around us. It's the example that Jesus set for us. And we, we read about uh, that in Matthew chapter 20, starting in verse 26, where he says, but among you, it should be quite different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must become your slave. For even I, the son of man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. So Jesus himself set that example. Jesus, who's God, left his throne above to come down here. Now, if he had done it like maybe some of us would have done it, he'd have come down with like a big parade and said, all right, now that I'm here, y'all can, can worship me, y'all can take care of me, you can wait on me hand and foot. But that's not what he did. He came in, in humility, and then he came and gave his life and served others. And I mean, if it's good enough for God, I don't think it's good enough for, for me. It's good enough for us. He set that example for, for all of us to follow. I know sometimes we get caught in this way of thinking, especially when it comes to, to church stuff, that we say, well, Dan, isn't that what you're for? That, that's, that's why we pay you. They, you're, you're, you're the one who's supposed to do all this church stuff. You're the one who's supposed to go out and visit the sick. You're the one who's supposed to go out and feed the hungry. That's what you're here for. But that's not how it works. All of us are called to serve. All of us are, are called to use the gifts that God has given us to be able to, to be in ministry, to be uh, active in the, the work that God is doing, to be active in the lives of others. Now, as, as an individual, as, as Dan Pran, I'm, I'm called to do that as much as everyone. As in, in my role as a pastor, there, there's kind of an additional call that goes on top of that. Uh, and, and we read about that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, where it says their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So, so it's, it's not my role to just go and do everything. It's my role to equip you to, to build up the body of Christ, to stand behind you and be a, a, a great cheerleader and encourage you on in the ministry that you're doing, to, to be able to help to, to teach and, and encourage and, and guide and direct and, and to, to, to rev you up and then hit the button and let you go and, and go do the work that God has called you to do. 
So this is kind of like the, the filling station. I'm, I'm supposed to come and I'm, I'm the attendant and pumping the gas and, and God is flowing his spirit into you. And then, but you can't just sit there. I mean, you got to take that and, and then go and do something with it. To be engaged, to be about the business of helping and, and serving other people. Because we're supposed to be in connection with one another. There's that horizontal component that is always there. I love going through scripture and, and especially as I read through the New Testament, I, I love when I find those places where it says one another because there's so many places in scripture where it talks about one another and it, I think it paints a beautiful picture of, of how we're supposed to do life together in community, how we're supposed to treat one another. And so one of those verses, one of those one another verses is in Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 where it says, for you have been called to live in freedom, not freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, but freedom to serve one another in love. See, we weren't, we weren't set free from the, the chains of our sin and our past to be able to just go and do whatever we want. We weren't set free from the, the hurts, habits, and hang-ups in our lives so that we can just go and, and meet our own needs. We were set free so that we could serve one another, to, to reach out to one another, to care for one another. Now, I know that a lot of times when I talk about this, I, I, I know from some conversations from some of y'all and just from human nature, human nature in general, that, that you kind of sit back and you go, well, you know, he's, he's really probably only talking to those who have been at this for a long time. Those who are, who, are, who are specially gifted, those who are really talented. He's not really talking to me. No, I'm talking to every single person in this room, every single person watching online. I, I'm talking to all of you that God has given you gifts. To be able to be used in his service. God has equipped each of us to be able to serve. We read about that in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. Where it says God has given gifts to each of you. From his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. But when, when, we, when we suffer from a poor spiritual self image. And we kind of say oh well you know it's not really me. I don't really have anything to offer. What happens is we are becoming a bottleneck to the flow of God's generosity. We're becoming a barrier that, 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 that prevents God's plan, God's generosity, God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness from flowing out into the lives of others uh, because we're just not quite good enough. No, that's not how it works. All of us has, have been given gifts to help that flow, to, to be able to direct that flow of God's generosity and love and grace and forgiveness out into the lives of others. So it doesn't matter how big you think your gifts are, how small you think your gifts are. All of our gifts are important. We're all part of the body of Christ. We're, we're all different pieces. And, and the problem is, is if, if a portion of the body isn't functioning the way that it should, the body as a whole suffers. The same thing in the body of Christ. If, if you as a part of the body of Christ are not living up to what God has designed you to do, then the whole body suffers. We have all been called to, to different things. It's not valuing one thing or another. I mean, in, in the body of Christ here, maybe right now I'm the, I'm the mouth. I mean, because I'm up here talking all the time. There may be some of you who, who you could get paid a million bucks and you wouldn't stand up here in front of everybody. You, you may be sitting up there and you're thinking, yeah, body of Christ, I'm more like an armpit. I don't know. But you know, but you have to have all parts of the body of Christ. We've, we've all been created in different ways. God has used our, our, the skills and talents and abilities and, and experiences and just the way he's wired our personality types to be able to accomplish something for him. And, and so we all need to be plugged in. We all need to be involved. We often realize that, that all, we are so different and God has given us different gifts all to be a part of the body of Christ. And, and so in order to kind of help give outlets for all of that service, there are so many opportunities. You look, maybe you got a chance to look around at some of the tables around the outside of the room. There's so many ministries, so many ways to get involved here in service with ushers and greeters and small group leaders and hospitality and food pantry. And, and we've got new things starting up. We've got a, a security team as our, as our church continues to grow. We're going to be developing that. Maybe that's something you might be interested in being a part of. We have uh, over by the tree over there, there's a table for what we're calling the A team. It's, it's a brand new ministry that we're starting of, of, uh, for, for maybe guys who are retired and, and staying home. You just are 
driving your wives crazy. And, and so you need a place to go. And, and, and so to come to church and, and maybe you've got some, some repair skills or fix-it skills or some specialized things like uh, um, being an electrician or something like that, doing, doing drywall, whatever, to be able to come here and, and be able to, be, to use those skills and abilities and talents and gifts that God has given you to be able to help accomplish some of the things around here at church. I mean, it was the it was the work of volunteers for 90 percent that got us into this room that have done all the work in here. And so we're looking for some more folks to come alongside and maybe to help us to be able to take some next steps. So we all have different um, time and talents and treasure to be able to be used to serve one another. And, and if you don't know exactly where to get plugged in, I encourage you. Diane Jones is one of our, our ministry leaders here. She's one of our directors of ministry. She's been plugging people in all over the place. If you come to her and you say, well, you know, my only skill is I'm a left-handed basket weaver. You know what? She will find a place for you. Because it's amazing to see how God can use um, things that we might consider just kind of hobbies, things we do for fun, to be able to use them in ministry. We have a couple of great examples here today. I mean, Joe in our computer ministry that he started, he was just fixing up computers for fun. And then God put it on his heart and said, hey, you know, this can be used to benefit the people in the community. And so so we've been donating computers here to the church and Joe's been taking them and cleaning them up and fixing them up and getting them out into people's hands who who need computer help. We, we have our, our prayer shawl ministry and our, our sewing group that, that take, I mean, they're just crafty people and they make all kinds of cool, incredible things. And they have the opportunity then to, to be used in, in ministry to, to help other people. So, so maybe, maybe something that you have that you consider a, a hobby might be something that God could be able to use to, to benefit the lives of others. I, I heard a, a pastor say this week that, uh, that maybe, maybe what you can't stand will help you to understand what you're called to do. So maybe if you're trying to figure it out, maybe you look around and find the things that bother you. Maybe you're sitting out there and we're singing the songs and you go, they split another prepositional phrase up there. It just drives me crazy when they do that. Well, maybe that's where God is calling you to volunteer because I tell you what, I'm the one who puts the words together. So I would love for you to come and unsplit prepositional phrases. I may split some prepositional phrases just to poke you a little bit. Uh, but then, because maybe, maybe, maybe you have an English major and, and stuff like that just drives you crazy. Well, maybe that's a way you can jump in and get on board and, and help. So maybe it's an area where, where, where God is poking you a little bit and you instead of maybe just kind of sitting around and complaining about it, Get out and do something. Do something about it. Use what God has given you to be able to benefit the body of Christ. Because it's so important for us to get involved in serving. And not just, not just for other people. Not just to benefit other people. That's a huge part of it. But that's not all of it. God wants us to be able to reach outside of ourselves. Not, not just to accomplish his purposes in the world. If the end result of all of it was just for God to accomplish his purposes in the world, he'd snap his fingers and his purposes would be accomplished. He's God. He can do that kind of thing. But, but he wants to accomplish his purposes through us. He, he wants to be able to use us. Because God knows how much it benefits us when we serve others. I know so many of you who, who have experienced that on your own. And as you get a chance after the service to talk to some of the folks at these booths, they, they can tell you the story as well about how, how serving has impacted their lives. Because sometimes when we get stressed and depressed and, and, and life seems to get in that, that downward spiral that we get in sometimes because we, we, we just tend to focus on our own problems, our own issues, our own concerns. We, we develop what I've heard called a, a case of ingrown eyeballs and, and we just we're just looking at ourselves and focusing on our, our our own situation one of the best things that we can do when we get stressed and depressed is to turn our eyes and our energy outward to to, to look at others to, to help others to, to be able to give i know i've experienced that in my own life to, to be able to put myself outside of my own problems my own situation it sometimes begins to put things in perspective the, 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 these problems that I thought were so huge in my own life, because that's the only thing I was focusing on, when I begin to look out and help others and serve others, it changes the way I look at my own situation. And I tell you what, some of the most satisfied, fulfilled, at peace people that I've known in my life are, are folks who have made serving just a, a part of their everyday lives. 
Now, for some, it came naturally. For others, they had to work at it. They had to maybe take some steps at the beginning and, and, and try this out. And, and, and oh, wow, that was, that was actually pretty cool. And, and then take another step. And, and so uh, if, if you haven't gotten involved in serving somewhere before, take an opportunity. Find a place to get connected. Find, look at what your, your, your passions are. Look at, look at where God has given you experience and, and giftedness. And, and then be able to, to work in that area. Because while, while some of the ways that we, that we serve involve things inside the church and involve serving one another right here in, in our church community, um, if our serving stops there, then, then we're missing out on, on what's been called in the United Methodist Church recently. They, they refer to it as salty service. Salty service. And you go, oh, what, what does that mean? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Where it says, uh, let me tell you why you're here. You are to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garden. I mean, salt, by staying in the salt shaker, does not accomplish the purpose for which it was created. I mean, salt is used to, 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 to season food, to, to bring out some of the flavors that are there. If it just stays in the salt shaker, what, what good is it? The same thing for us, if we just kind of stay here in our little salt shaker and, and we don't go out and spread this, this God flavoring in the world, if we don't show people what it means to, to live a life characterized by, by, by the fruit of the Spirit, a life characterized by a, a life-giving relationship with God, if we just stay kind of within our own four little walls here, what good does it do to people? If our salty service just stays inside the church, it's going to die. Maybe you've heard of the Dead Sea over in Israel. When I was when I was really little, my family traveled over there, and we got a chance to see it. And it was it was amazing to see. the The only thing was is that it has a lot of inflow, but there's no outflow, and so the salt content is really high. I mean, part of it's cool because you can float on there really easily, but what, that's not what it was designed for. There, 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 there's nothing alive in there because of the the high salt content, because there's all inflow and no outflow. And how is that in, in your life? Or maybe maybe you're, you're, you're coming to church all the time and, and going to Bible studies and reading your Bible and there's all this inflow and inflow and inflow. But if there's no outflow, you're going to be unhealthy. You need to have outflow in your life as well. You need to start putting into practice some of the things that God's been teaching you. You need, you need to live it out. We, we need to be vital in reaching out to our community. If, if Edgewater United Methodist Church were to disappear tomorrow, would the community even notice? I think in a lot of ways they would, because I think that's one of kind of the hallmarks of, of our church, is our, is our outward focus. There are so many ways to get connected and get involved, and, and, and we need to do that. Every single one of us needs to be involved in effective, life-changing outreach into our community and into our world. Not just inviting people to come to church, that's really important, we want you to continue to do that, but, but going to the people and helping to meet their needs, meeting some of the practical needs that they have. We do that through, through lots of opportunities here, through our, our food pantry and our bike ministry and our thrift store and our sewing circle and, and our stair reading program and, and our missions giving and our disaster response team. There are lots of ways that we reach out into the community, but there's still so much that can be done. I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like if, if, if each and every one of us, just even just this group here in the room this morning, if, if we fully invested our lives into giving uh, our, our, our full selves to God, the gifts that he's given us to, to deploy them in ministry, I can't even imagine what would happen in this community. We need, we need to go out and meet these practical needs that people have. Let them know that God loves them. But letting God use the resources that he's placed in our hands, our time, our talents, our treasure, to, to be able to, to spread around to benefit others. We need to be integrated in all sorts of ways in our community. Through, through our chambers of commerce and business organizations, through your job and workplace, through your school, through, through community organizations. We need to be out and involved spreading this, this salty service, this God seasoning into the world. We need to be willing to get in and get our hands dirty. Giving financially towards outreach is, is very important, but, but that can't be the only thing that we do. In Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 6, Peter is heading to the temple and there's a, a crippled person outside the temple begging for money. And this is what happens. Peter said, I don't have any money for you, 
but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. You see, he didn't, he didn't just throw money at the problem like a lot of people did. He, he came up with a more creative, life-changing uh, solution. And he was able to go and meet a practical need for someone. So maybe you need to allow God to, to push you a little bit. That's actually been uh, my, my prayer for you over, over these past couple of weeks, is that God would make you uncomfortable. So, so if you're feeling uncomfortable, good. Because <laughs> I want God to poke you a little bit, to, to get you to move, to get you to take a next step, to, to push you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Because, you know, it, it, we, we can get comfortable. We can sit back. It's easy to love those who are easy to love. It's easy to love those who love us. In Luke chapter 6, verse 32 and 33, it says, Do you think you deserve credit merely for loving those who love you? Even sinners do that. And then if you do good only to those who do good to you, is it, do good to you, is that so wonderful? Even sinners do that much. If you're comfortable, maybe God has something more than comfortable for you. If you're just feeling nice and safe, maybe God has something more than just safe. For you. Hey, maybe God is calling you to a to a big adventure kind of life. Not, not just to play it safe, but to reach out into to this community, to reach out around the world. In, in Luke chapter 9, verse 24, it says, If you try to keep your life for yourself, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. There's a man named Jim Elliott, and uh, he, he answered a call of God on his life to reach the peoples in the jungles of Ecuador. And his family wanted him to just do, do youth ministry at a suburban church and play, play it safe. But that's not what God was calling him to do. He knew that God was calling him to give his, his whole life to move out of his comfort zone. He knew that his life was to be spent in service of others. Otherwise, what's, what's the point? try to keep your life for yourself, you're going to lose it. Give up your life for me and you'll find true life, is what Jesus said. And so, so he wanted to impact the lives of others for eternity. And, and he, he gave his life. He ended up actually giving his whole life. He ended up being killed out in the jungle. When they, when they found his journal, they, they found a quote, and I actually have that quote. I have a little thing that I keep on my desk all the time as a reminder. This is what Jim Elliott wrote in his journal. He said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. There are lots of things we can't keep. We can't keep time. Time, time just flows through our fingers. What, what happened, I'm sure you've had the same thing happen. You sit back and you go, wow, where did today go? Just, just kind of disappeared. Or, or the, hey, this last week, this last month, this last year, wow, what happened? We can't hang on to time. So why not invest it in something that can impact somebody's life for eternity? Our, the resources that we have, you know as well as I do, they have a tendency to flow through our fingers. Why not be able to use them in a way that, that can impact someone's life for eternity? To, to be able to give what you can't keep in order to gain things in eternity that you cannot lose. Are you ready to invest your life in things last forever? Or are you ready to give your one and only life into an adventure that will impact people's lives for eternity? Are you ready to allow God to begin a transformation in you to cure you of your case of ingrown eyeballs and to set your sights on a new life of salty service? Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this time today, for the way that you have called us to be here. That you, We thank you that you have gifted each and every one of us and, and equipped us to be able to do something for you. So I pray that you give us the courage that we need to, uh, to live that out. To step out of our comfort zone, to find a place where we can get uh, connected where we can spend our, our lives, spend our time, our talents, our treasure, all that you've given us, to spend it in your service, to reach out to people in your name. 
So God, I pray that uh, that if you're poking some folks this morning, that they will uh, have the courage to respond, to even just take a walk around the room in here after the service, to see some places where they can get connected, to, to listen to your voice. That as, as they're looking at one of these tables and talking to someone, that, that the buzzer goes off and they know that that's where, that's where you call them. And that if there are other things that aren't even represented in this room, other ministries that you've called us, that you give them the courage to come and talk to me, come and talk to Diane, to follow uh, your, your call, your plan, to be able to use the gifts that you've given them, to serve you, to serve us. Be with us now in this time and this place. We thank you and ask this in Jesus. We're going to take some time just to kind of listen to God's voice here, to, to hear maybe where it is that he's calling you to, to step out. And so uh, we're going to spend some time singing. If you'd like to come and be in prayer here at the altar, you can do that. Or if you'd like to stay in your seat and sing along with the song, you can do that. But let's take some time. Let's listen to what God has in store for us today.
investing it? Are you spending it on things that aren't going to last? Things that flow through your fingers? Or are you going to invest it in things that last for eternity? Over the past couple of weeks, we've had a table out by the front uh, front door to, for you to get a chance to stop by and get plugged in. I realize that, uh, that a lot of uh, things can change from the seat to the front door. So we brought the tables to you today. So the tables are all surrounding the outside of this room. As soon as we're done here, I just invite you to stick around for a few minutes. Walk around the room. Have some conversations with folks. Look at the information. See where it is maybe that God is wanting to plug you in. To, to get you involved. A, a place that, that he's saying, Who, who's going to go? I'm calling out. Who will go? And maybe today you have the opportunity to say, here am I. I'll go. So as you go forth today, go. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week. <laughs>